AMD's next APUs might be as good as a dedicated graphics card. Intel's new dedicated graphics cards have been tested in laptops and GPU prices continue to fall. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about the next gen APUs coming out from AMD, codenamed Phoenix. These are the APUs that we're expecting to have Zen 4 CPUs, so the next gen CPUs, plus RDNA 3 graphics and the latest leak that's coming out about these chips which consume 35 to 45 watts of power is that the graphics performance might be on par with an RTX 3060 mobile now it's only the 60 watt version of the RTX 3060 mobile which is not the fastest one available but it actually does perform pretty decently which is incredibly impressive considering where APUs are at right now we have seen a few RDNA 2 APUs starting to come out. ETA Prime just did a video on the 680M and it does look like the graphical performance of RDNA 2 in constrained environments is looking pretty good. We've already seen how that can perform on something like the PlayStation 5, the Series X, as well as on the Steam Deck. So getting the next generation version, being able to compete with what is a essentially a really good 1080p card is something that gets me very excited and I'm hoping to see come out very soon. But to test this on the other hand, PC World actually finally got a hands-on with the A370M Arc GPU from Intel by literally going to their headquarters because you cannot get these out on the open market even though Intel said that they were launching by the end of Q1 of this year. And what they found is that the A370M, while not the lowest discrete GPU, coming in just a step above that, it actually beats out Intel's integrated graphics by about double in a lot of use cases, but actually performs worse than the RTX 3050 and performs significantly worse than the RTX 3060. You can see here in Time Spy, it performs all right compared to the 3050. In something like Final Fantasy 14 benchmark, it performs again all right compared to the 3050, but nowhere near as good as the 3060. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it managed to get close to 60 FPS while the integrated graphics could only get 21. The 3050 managed 50 FPS, but the 3060 was at 98. And then in something like Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, it barely got 20 FPS on that, whereas the 3050 did a little bit better and the 3060 could run over 60 FPS. So while that seems to be all right for now, we really don't have a whole lot of pricing on Intel's laptops and there's no availability. It seems like they're an all right competitor for what's happening right now. We're obviously waiting for RDNA 3 to launch later this year, which potentially will give AMD the leg up over both Nvidia and Intel. But I think after hearing that the Phoenix APU might rival an RTX 3060 mobile and then seeing the A370M struggle to even fight with an RTX 3050. I'm not as impressed, but let me know what you think of Intel's dedicated GPUs and their laptops down below in the comments while I tell you about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's episode of Hot News is sponsored by Incogni. My friends, your data is all over the internet. It's actually a large problem that's being more openly discussed as the age of the internet has continuously progressed. Data brokers are buying and selling your data more than ever. And with more swapping of data going on, there's more data breaches happening. And in fact, according to the 2021 annual data breach report by Identity Theft Resource Center, they said that there were 68% more data breaches in 2021 than the year prior. So the likelihood of your data getting breached is constantly increasing. Your aggregated personal data is being shared across the internet. And the worst part is you don't even know about it and it might actually take years for you to find out about it. And that's where Incogni comes in. They solve this by helping to protect your privacy and take your personal data off the market by reaching out to those data brokers on your behalf and recording requesting that personal data removal and then dealing with their objections. And the best part is the whole process is automated. You just create an account and tell us whose personal data they're trying to remove. Then you grant them the right to work for you. They'll contact all the data brokers and request the removal of that data from their databases. And then you just relax as Incogni takes care of all of it for you as they keep you updated through every step of the process. So Incogni is making it easier than ever to protect yourself from data brokers and making sure that you are in control of your own data, whether it's from data breaches happening out there or identity theft that's happening, Incogni can help you out. And the first 100 people to use the code HOTNEWS at the link below, which is incogni.com forward slash hotnews, you'll get
get 20% off of Incogni. Again, that's incogni.com forward slash hot news. Use code hot news at the link below to save 20% off. Big thanks to Incogni for sponsoring today's episode. In case you're looking to save money on some tech products, we've got UFD deals right here for you, brought to you by Reese. The only data privacy that's happening is there's affiliate links and they track it so we get a small cut of whatever you buy, but it doesn't cost you anything. Anyways, the HyperX Quadcast S is selling for $120 right now over on Amazon. It's a 25% discount and the RTX 3080 Ventus from MSI is going for only $810 on Newegg right now. It's its lowest price in 30 days after a $30 rebate card, but showing that GPUs are continuing to fall in price. And what's also falling in price is crypto stocks. Bitcoin down nearly 10% as of the time of recording in the last 24 hours. When I started getting ready for hot news, it was actually about $1,000 less than this. It was down 11%, so the market's slightly stabilizing, but Bitcoin's down below a $600 billion market cap. Ethereum also really struggling down 10.3% to be at 22.97 at a $272 billion market cap, and Dogecoin down 13% to be at 10.9 cents. You add into this GameStop being down 14%, and it looks like there's a large struggle happening across the market. If you just even take a quick peek at regular stocks, the Dow Jones is down roughly 2%, NASDAQ's down 4.29%, the S&P 500's down 3.2%. Stocks have been kind of crumbling lately, so it kind of stands to reason that crypto would fall alongside that as investment fears kind of ramp up. It's not going to necessarily hold up. So it seems like the perfect time for Instagram to bring NFTs to their app. At least that's the plan. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg saying that they're uh, they're testing digital collectibles, as they're calling them, to showcase NFTs over on Instagram. They're starting to build out for that for not just their metaverse and reality labs, but across their families of apps. So you can have your NFT in your Instagram profile. You can have your NFT in your metaverse space and you can just you can have your digital art that is somehow scarce, but not scarce that you could have had anyways. But now you get to have it for real in your metaverse app. This makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm very excited about this. And you should also be excited about the drop of GPU prices. We've got a new indication coming out of Germany from Mind Factory showing off that the pricing of GPUs on their side has been falling quite considerably even still. Nvidia's down to 114% of MSRP pricing and AMD's down to 107% of MSRP pricing. So that means that they're only slightly above, especially considering to where they were just a year ago, as you can see right here. Eight. NVIDIA one year ago was 318% of MSRP, whereas AMD was roughly 200%. GPU pricing is very much down as we've been showing you UFD deals. You can find GPUs close to MSRP or even like the 6900 XT under MSRP. It appears to be good and it appears to be potentially a good time to take those savings of GPUs and invest it in mining. I don't know, especially if you only want one GPU for your gaming system. But yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how the LHR lock that's on RTX 30 series cards has been defeated by NiceHash. Well, it came out just a few hours after that, that the LHR unlock has now been had over on Linux thanks to NB Miner or Nebu Miner. You can actually use the 100% performance of RTX 30 series cards for that, with that being confirmed by video cards followers, at least according to them. I don't really know any Anything about NB Miner, so if you do, you can let me know down below in the comments. I know a little bit about NiceHash, so I have an understanding of how that's working. I'm curious to see how this is working. It's kind of intriguing that both of these came out roughly at the same time. Some conspiracy theories are indicating that maybe Nvidia pushed this out there so that more people would buy their GPUs. Potentially, they're seeing a slump of GPU sales, so if you can entice them back with some mining, you can implement a feature that shouldn't be there in the first place, then you can remove it later on. You could have a whole good situation on your hands. This is exactly like Slurm and New Slurm. Yes, which is why we'll market it as New Slurm. Then, when everyone hates it, we'll bring back Slurm Classic and make billions. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to slurm on out of this episode of Hot News. Big thanks to you for watching. We'll catch you back here tomorrow for more tech news.